Hi, I just most recently watched uh, Patty Quinn's video on free speech vids, and I decided to go ahead and make this video uh, from a bunch of other subjects that I was interested in doing one in, and um, since it has to do with uh, with what he spoke about in his own video, um, life and the purpose that we assign to it, etc. And uh, this is from an essay that I wrote. I got pretty good on it, 94%. Uh, um, that uh, pretty much has to do with that, and um, I'll be reading it. And since I don't think it would be too interesting in seeing me, uh, watching me read a paper, I decided to put this more interesting piece of driftwood on display. It can be said that something has a purpose, but strictly in terms of cause and effect. In defense against those that would say, if there are any left that would still say, that all is arbitrary and cause and effect do not exist, it must be admitted in so far as is generally acknowledged throughout history up until now that there is some continuity between events. Otherwise, such a notion as studying history, or perhaps even history itself, would be insubstantial. It might be added for the most skeptical of solipsists that thinking too would be impossible, since there would be nothing to hold two thoughts together without the process of cause and effect. And of course, it must be said that cause and effect is a process, since it is the concept that one happening is dependent on another, and that one thing can lead to the next. Just as much as a burning piece of paper, if left burning, will lead to a collection of ashes. It is in this manner that we can identify something as having a purpose. When I decide that a hot dog is meant for eating and eat it, the idea that I assigned to it has an impact on its existence, just as hot dogs are widely made with the action of them eat being eaten in mind, and as they are then eaten under most circumstances, all hot dogs can be assigned with a general purpose that influences, to whatever degree, its further existence, that of being eaten. But what of life? Can life be assigned with a purpose? Many atheists may reject the idea out of its frequent connection with the topic of divine creation, but as I have put it above, no supreme being is needed to prescribe meaning to, or purpose to any concept or portion of space and time, merely factors that influence its being. Something, however, such as life, may seem to be one concept difficult to pin down, as the lives of every human being, whom I choose out of want for simplicity and since humanity concerns us most directly, is different in many ways from any other. However, by finding the key similarities among every one of us, a question so striking as, why don't we all commit suicide now if we are going to die anyway, can be answered with ease. The first observation I shall make to this end will be the very practice of seeking and securing means to their survival. The second being the wish to indulge in some something that appeals to them when they are not worrying, worrying about survival. These two can be easily illustrated in the context of common day-to-day -day life, and even more easily in that of modern industrialized society. Whether one is drinking water, eating food, working for some end that will aid them in continuing to be in this world, or even participating in the natural reflex of breathing, one is in the process of securing the means needed to survive. The second action, that of indulgence, can be attributed to any other action not exclusively intended to ensure survival. Reading, going for a, scroll, a stroll, practicing in some activity for a, some concept of self-betterment, and the feeling of fulfillment. Even working can be attributed with this, as well as eating, when having flavor in mind, at least partly, since though in nature it is something that is needed to survive, uh, indulgence can be uh, drawn from such uh, such actions, among other things. Even the objection that a masochist neither has their survival in mind nor their own enjoyment can be countered by the factor of misinterpreting indulgence as enjoyment in. Indulgence is merely the fulfillment of some unnecessary want or impulse. To seek one's own pain it can be considered as one such impulse. From these two collections of actions, we will attempt to draw the motivation for the, con the continuation of life. Firstly, it is impossible to indulge in some element if one is not alive to do it. I will dismiss the notion of, indul uh, the the notion of indulging in an afterlife, as the very implication of one suggests some sort of living, uh, rendering the notion inconsequential, or at least in this argument. So in this way, indulgence is dependent upon the survival of the individual, but this does not tell us what motivation behind survival is. 
There are then two possibilities in regards that can be observed from these two collections of actions in relation to one another. One, that people will first ensure their survival and then find something to do with the spare resources, time, possessions, etc. Or two, that they have an extra activity in mind when their survival will be ensured and so survival would be dependent on the expectation of indulgence, a Copernican argument if any. Both point to the motivation being to engage in some activity not entirely comprised of survival. The first, because though one may not have any clear desire for a future indulgence in mind, some more time to find out what to do with is expected. The second, because a specific indulgence is in mind. If one were to object and say that some merely live for the sake of still being, their objection would be easily toppled, for either the individual intends to indulge in the action of being, or they merely are a part of our first observation of the two recently discussed. There is then some sense of anticipation that keeps the living on their feet, akin to when one watches some climaxing show, or reaches the point where a novel's plot thickens, where then we are led to believe that there is something to follow, that what has been revealed to us is an incomplete picture, the expectation that there is something else. People want to see the rest. But this picture, as we may call it, cannot be life itself as a mere duration of existence, since if we were to say that a certain amount of time alive were an incomplete picture, a completed picture in that context would merely be composed of more living time, so there's no constitutional difference between the two. We must then return to the want to indulge in things apart from our survival. It is likely, since it is during our experiences that this uh, takes place, that we create wants based on an interest or engagement to what we are exposed to, and these desires make up the idea, in the platonic sense, though present in the mind, are of our lives, no matter how obscure it may seem. We may also be the incomplete picture, for the idea that we follow is composed of us with the addition of the experiences we are seeking to fulfill. So if any reason can be attributed to why we don't all commit suicide now, is that we are simply expecting more from an existence we have engaged ourselves in. Those that do commit suicide, since their existence is an unavoidable issue in this subject, is that they have not been witness to enough evidence that would suggest that there is something more to follow. Just as a poorly written book may be chucked away before it is finished, for lack in evidence of further substance. That is all as I've seen it thus far. And now, of course, um, that's the end of my essay, though I have thought about it a lot more uh, before writing it, though since there is a, obviously a limited amount of time that one can, uh, can write in such a circumstance, um, I pretty much wrote the general, uh, my general thoughts on the subject. So if um, you have any questions on uh, my take on the matter or have your own take, uh, please feel free to write a comment. Uh, to tell me what you think or tell others what you think and post a video response if uh, you're interested in the subject uh, well enough to do that. And um, also, since I don't know how to make a uh, video response on free speech vids, um, that's uh, I, I posted it here in response to TJ's announcement of uh, pa uh, Patty Quinn's video. So uh, if I figure out how to do it, I'll of course upload to free speech vids uh, from the YouTube event. Thank you.